What's going on guys, it is Panjano here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 4 Ultimate FPS Increase Guide. This video is going to be helping you guys achieve the very best gameplay experience possible, boosting FPS, reducing any stuttering you might be experiencing, reducing input lag and helping you guys achieve the smoothest, snappiest and fastest feeling game possible with inside of the latest Season 4 update for Fortnite. This latest version of the Ultimate FPS Increase Guide has gone through a major overhaul, removed all older optimizations on which are now obsolete, fine tuned a few of the tweaks in which we used to previously enable and and added a plethora of brand new optimizations which are not only easier and quicker to apply but more effective as well. So again guys if you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with the results from this video please leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously. Alongside leaving your results, questions, queries or suggestions for any other content in that comment section down below. And if you guys do enjoy content like this and wish to stay up to date with the channel please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly of whenever a video goes live on my channel. For the first and one of the most important optimizations in which we can apply inside of this entire video is to first of all ensure that we are running on the brand new free update to Windows 10 which is actually version 2004. With this free update to Windows 10 there's been a plethora of optimizations towards the base operating system itself helping towards core unparking defaultly with inside of the operating system and some other tweaks in which we used to have to set manually with inside of my other videos are now defaultly set and Windows can defaultly apply these optimizations to the operating system automatically. Alongside that it also features a few more gaming optimizations on which have been enabled only in the latest version of Windows 10 and which we can utilize throughout this video. First of all take yourself to the bottom left hand side click on the Windows key type in Windows Winver just like so, then click on the winver command. As you can see for me I'm running on version 2004 and at the time of recording this video this is the latest version of Windows in which you should be running on. To do this is very simple and easy to do, press ok, navigate down to the bottom left hand side once again, this time typing in updates, go to the check for updates tab, with inside of here Windows will then refresh and find any updates which are available to install to your operating system. If there are not updates available with inside of here click the refresh button and if you guys are running on an older version of Windows you should have the update for version 2004 available for you. You'll have the option to download and install this update and it is highly recommended to do so. This can take around about 10 to 30 minutes but it is definitely worthwhile to ensure that you guys get the best FPS. To kick off the optimizations themselves it's first of all recommended to navigate into the description down below and where you can find an FPS increase pack in which I have provided. Click on the first download link if for some reason you're having issues downloading the file with the first download link, click on the second one, download the file and place it onto your desktop. To open up this file slash folder, simply right click on the file, go ahead to extract here, you'll then be met with a folder on your desktop with an identical name. We can then start off by applying an optimization to all of the drives on our PCs to ensure that they're running to the best of their ability to ensure that we're reducing our stuttering and loading times. For this navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows key, type the word optimize in, then go over to defragment and optimize drives. With inside of here what we're simply going to be doing is applying this optimization to all drives with inside of our PC. To apply this we're going to start off with the top drive with inside of our PC, so for me that's going to be our C drive. Highlight the drive, go over to optimize on the right hand side. We can then go down to our secondary drive. If you do have the option to analyze, make sure that you do analyze first, then hit optimize. And we're going to repeat this step for all of the drives on our PC. So once again, highlight the drive, select analyze, go over to the right hand side to optimize. Once you guys have finished applying all of the optimizations to your drives, it should say OK. Then we can go ahead and exit out. We can then apply our brand new season 4 configs to the game. This is very simple and easy to do. Simply navigate into the FPS pack provided, go inside of the configs folder, then within inside of here, you simply need to decide which config you're going to be installing to your game. You have the high-end config, low-end and recommended config and a brief description of those configs can be found on the right hand side. For me and for most people I would recommend going with the recommended config which provides a great FPS boost whilst maintaining good visuals. But click on the folder you're going to be going with. To install these it's very simple and easy to do. Drag this folder over to the right hand side then navigate down to the bottom left hand side and click on the windows key. With inside of here we're simply going to be typing in percent app data percent just like so and press enter then with inside of here go up to the navigation bar at the top click where it says app data then go to the local folder with inside of here scroll down to the f section and we're going to be looking for fortnite game go inside of fortnite game saved config windows client once inside of here navigate over to the right hand side back to our optimized game configs highlight all of these files then simply drag them into the config directory for our game replace these files in this destination and we've then successfully installed our optimized season 4 configs and piggybacking off of that step we can then install our brand new launch options for these navigate inside of the fps pack once again go inside of the launch options text document in the directory then inside of here you simply need to tweak these around to match your system specs to find the number you need to put into here navigate to the bottom down to your taskbar right click on your taskbar and open up task manager drag this over to the left hand side then go to the performance tab then go to cpu navigate to the bottom right hand side and look for the number of logical processors your cpu has for me I have 16 so as you can see my number is 16. So match this number, your number is more than likely going to be different to mine. Once that number has then been set, highlight and drag all the way from the right hand side to the left, 
copy all of these launch options and exit out. Exit out of Task Manager, go inside of the Epic Games Launcher, navigate to the bottom left hand side to your Settings tab, scroll all the way down to the bottom, go to Fortnite, click on the option for additional command line arguments. If there are any in here already, highlight all of them, remove all of them, right click, select paste to paste in our brand new optimizations, then click on the drop down menu once again, click on the back button, minimize out of Epic Games, and we're then good to go. Now we're going to be applying two more optimizations. To apply the first optimization, we simply need to boot into the game. After we've applied this optimization, we can then go through all of our in-game settings to fine tune them and tweak them to our personal preference. Upon booting into the game, you're more than likely going to wonder why the game looks strange. The game could also be running in a window mode for you, but do not worry about any of that as we're going to be setting up all of those settings after this step. So first of all, what we need to go ahead and do once the game is open is press our alt and tab key on our keyboard. Once you guys have done that navigate to the bottom of your screen to the task bar, right click, open up task manager. Once inside of the task manager navigate over to the processes tab, go into the processes and find Fortnite. Right click, click on open file location. For this optimization it's very simple and easy to do. Start off by going to Fortnite client win64 shipping, right clicking, going to properties, going to the compatibility tab, ensuring that disable full screen optimizations has been checked, go on to change high DPI, click on override high DPI here at the bottom, press ok apply and OK. Then repeat that step for the following three applications with inside of here. Once you guys are done with inside of there, we can then go ahead and exit out of the game application. Upon booting into the game, navigate to the top right hand side to the three lines. Click on the three lines, then go to the settings tab. With inside of here, we can start off with the video settings tab, starting off with windowed mode. Set this to full screen as full screen is by far the best windowed mode to be using with inside of season four and offers a drastic performance increase across the board for all PCs. For resolution, we're going to be setting this to the highest option available for you, which is more than likely going to be your monitor's native resolution. Resolution. For me, that's going to be 2560 by 1440. But for most of you watching, you're more than likely going to be running at 1920 by 1080. If at the end of this video, you're still not completely happy with the FPS in which you are getting and you're looking for further gains, it is recommended to come back with inside of the resolution option and bump this down by around about one step from your normal resolution. So for those of you running on 1920 by 1080, drop down to 1600 by 900. And if you're running at 2560 by 1440, try going with 1080p. Never getting down to frame rate limit, I would recommend keeping this set to unlimited for most people who are looking to get the best FPS possible. But if you do want to keep your FPS capped, whether you're using G-Sync, FreeSync, or if your PC runs into overheating issues and you wish to keep your FPS capped for those reasons, you can cap your FPS if you wish to do so. Otherwise, I'd recommend going with Unlimited. Brightness should be set to around about 125% for the best overall visual fidelity. This now brings us down to the 3D resolution option. This is going to be one of the most important options with inside of the video settings tab for achieving our desired FPS. For most people watching, I'd recommend going down to a setting of about 80%, but alternatively, you can look on the right-hand side of the screen now and you'll see some settings you should set depending on your system specs and desired FPS. Everyone is going to have a different personal preference when it comes to this setting, but overall, if you're looking for the best FPS possible, the lower this number is set to, the better FPS you'll be getting. So try it with about 80%. If you're happy with how the game still looks, try out 70% and keep going down lower and lower until the game becomes too blurry and find out what your visual balance is and set this number as low as possible. For me, I like to go with 80% at 2560 by 1440. We can then go down to view distance. I'd recommend keeping this to near for everyone. If you do want to bump this up though, go with medium. Shadows should either be switched to off if you want shadows off for the best FPS possible, otherwise keep them to medium. Anti-aliasing should also be switched off, and again, if you want to have this turned on, switch this to medium at the highest. Textures should be set to match your system specs, so for low-end PCs, go with low-end textures, otherwise go with medium or high. I like to go with medium-end textures. Effects should be switched to low, and post-processing should be switched to low as well, unless you're running on a higher-end PC and you wish to keep these on, put them to medium. This now brings us down to V-Sync. V-Sync should be switched off regardless of your system specs. Motion Blur should also be switched off. Show FPS should be turned on. On. DirectX version should be switched to DirectX 12 for higher end gaming PCs, medium end gaming PCs, as running DirectX 12 alongside these optimized in-game settings and configs in which we're using with the start of this video can offer a drastic performance increase across the board. For those of you running on medium end to low end PCs, I'd recommend trying out DirectX 11 as you might be seeing better results from using that. Allow multi-threaded rendering should also be switched on for everyone. Use GPU crash debugging should be switched off. And once all of those settings have been set, navigate to the bottom right hand side and press apply. We can then finally navigate over to the audio tab found up here in the top, go to sound quality, go to low, 3D headphones off, background audio off, and visualize sound effects should also be switched off. Last but not least, we can then go over to the main settings cog with inside of here at the top, click on the main settings cog, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and ensure that replays are all turned off. So record replays, record large team, and creative mode replays, all three of these options should be switched off. Then finally, go to the bottom right hand side and press apply. This now leads us on to optimizing our graphics cards or GPUs to ensure that we're getting the best performance possible out of those. It's also incredibly important that we are up to date with the latest graphics card drivers, as with the latest update of Windows 10, 
10, if you're not running on the brand new drivers which have been released for both AMD and Nvidia cards, you will not have access to some of the brand new features with inside of the operating system. So we'll start off by updating your graphics card drivers. For this, navigate to your desktop, right click, and you should be seeing the Nvidia control panel or the AMD Radeon settings panel. If you're seeing Intel or anything else, you can simply skip to the time on screen now and skip out of this step. Go into the description down below and click on the corresponding link for either Nvidia or AMD Radeon cards. Once you guys have clicked on your corresponding link, for Nvidia users, go to the automatic driver updates utility, then click on download now, Download the utility, once it's downloaded, open it up. It will then detect and install the latest graphics card driver for your system. Once you guys have clicked on the AMD Radeon link, you'll be brought to the auto detect and install Radeon graphics for Windows utility. Click on download now. Once again, download this utility, open it up. It will then detect and install the latest graphics card driver for your GPU and ensure that it's up and running successfully. We then need to apply some optimizations or settings to the GPU drivers themselves to ensure that we're getting the best performance out of the new drivers installed. For this, it's very simple and easy to do. Navigate into the FPS increase pack provided once again by double clicking, going inside of the optimizations folder and going inside of the GPU settings folder. You then be met with the AMD Radeon and Nvidia GeForce folders. To find out which folder you need to follow along with, go over to your desktop, right click anywhere. You'll either be seeing the Nvidia control panel or the AMD Radeon settings panel. Once you guys have done this, simply open up into your control panel and click on the corresponding folder for the control panel. You'll then be met with a plethora of screenshots in which you can follow along with simply and easily by starting off with screenshot one, double clicking on the screenshot and going through them. This will show you all of the GPU settings you need to set for the best performance for both Nvidia and AMD graphics cards. Simply follow along with those screenshots now and apply all of the settings shown with inside of them. Once you guys have updated your graphics cards, it is recommended to navigate to the bottom left hand side, right click on the power option and do a quick system restart just to ensure that Windows has now detected you're running on the latest graphics card driver and will unlock some of the brand new features in which we were discussing earlier. So assuming you guys are now running the latest update of Windows and the latest graphics card driver updates, we can then start off by navigating to the bottom left hand side, clicking on the Windows key and typing in GPU space settings. Click on graphics settings and to start off with inside of here, for some of you watching, you'll more than likely have the option titled hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This is one of the new optimizations with inside of the latest version of Windows and it's recommended to have this switch to the on position. Once that's then been enabled, you will have to restart your PC for that to take effect, but we can do that at the end of this video, so don't worry about doing that now. Second of all, we're going to be going down to the Graphics Performance Preference, clicking on Browse. If you're not entirely sure where your game is installed to, navigate over to the left hand side to this PC. Once inside of it, go to the top right hand side and we're going to be searching for Fortnite Client, just like so. Leave this for a few moments as Windows is then going to search through all of your drives and find out where this application is installed. After a few moments time, this should then give you some results. Navigate down to Fortnite Client Win64 Shipping. Once this has then been highlighted, go to the bottom right hand side to Add. Once you guys are done with inside of there, go over to Fortnite with inside of here, go to the Options menu and ensure that High Performance has then been checked at the bottom. We can now set up and optimize our optimal Windows power plan depending on whether we're running on an Intel based system or an AMD Ryzen based system. For this first of all we're going to be navigating to the bottom left hand side typing in power space plan just like so and pressing enter. Once you guys have done that you'll then be brought into the Windows power options, go into the navigation bar at the top, click on where it says power options up here, you'll then be brought into the choose or customize power plan option with inside of here. Go to the show additional plans and we're going to be looking for two plans with inside of here. If it's an AMD Ryzen CPU you want to be running on the AMD Ryzen high performance power plan. Simply put that is going to be the best and most efficient power plan to be running on any Ryzen CPU. CPU. If you are running on the Ryzen based CPU and you do not see that power plan available, it's very simple and easy to get hold of that power plan. So navigate into the description down below and click on the AMD Ryzen power plan link. You'll then be brought to this page found here, which is going to be the Ryzen drivers install. For this, you need to navigate down to the manual search tab, select chipsets, select socket AM4. You then need to click on the revision of motherboard you're using. You don't need to click on the exact model, but make sure that if you are running on a B350 motherboard or B450, you select which motherboard chipset you're running on. Then navigate down to the window. Windows 10 64 bit edition, then go to AMD chipset drivers, go to the right hand side, select download. Once the chipset is then finished downloading, simply open up the installer, run through it and install that chipset to your PC. You might have to restart your PC for that to successfully be applied and once you do that, you should then be seeing the AMD Ryzen high performance power plan. And for Intel users, we're going to be unlocking the ultimate performance power plan within the side of Windows as this will be giving you guys the best performance. Now if you've not manually come in here and enabled this power plan yourself beforehand, this will not be enabled and we'll have to enable this power plan. For Intel users, simply minimize out of this page, go into the FPS increase pack provided, go up to the command text document, highlight this entire command found up here in the top by right clicking, selecting copy and minimizing the FPS pack, navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the windows key, type in CMD, right click the command prompt and run this as an administrator, select yes, then go ahead and press control and then V on your keyboard to paste that command, press enter, you'll then be met with the power scheme GUID ultimate performance. Then go back inside of the power options menu in which we minimized out of earlier, go up to the top to the refresh button, select refresh and you should then be seeing the 
ultimate performance power plan with inside of here. Go ahead and select the power plan by going over to the left hand side to the small circle. Again, it is only recommended to be running on the ultimate performance power plan for anyone running on an Intel based system. We can then go ahead and exit out. We can then apply a couple of quick and effective tweaks to anyone using Discord. If Discord is open in your PC whilst playing, navigate inside of Discord, navigate to the left hand side to the user settings cog, starting off by going over to overlay. With inside of here, it's recommended to have enable in game overlay actually switched to the off position like so. Now for people running on medium end to high end PCs, navigate to the left hand side, go to appearance, scroll all the way down to the bottom to the advanced section, go to hardware acceleration and ensure that hardware acceleration is switched off. Click the flicker switch, go ahead and press OK. Discord will then be restarted with hardware acceleration disabled. We can then navigate down to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows key, type in game space mode, click on game mode settings, ensure that Windows game mode is actually enabled, then going over to the Xbox game bar and ensuring that Xbox game bar enable is actually switched to the off position. Once both of those optimizations have then been set, we can then go ahead and exit out and that'll apply a quick optimization to any gaming applications with inside of Windows to set them to a higher priority. Following on from that, we can then navigate to the bottom left hand side once again, clicking on Windows key, typing in this space PC, right clicking on this PC, going down to the properties section, navigating to the left hand side to advanced system settings, going to the advanced section, performance, then settings, going to the visual effects tab, and it's recommended for the best FPS possible to actually set this option to adjust for best performance. Now this will slightly change the way text and other things look with inside of Windows to a much more basic version, but can improve FPS. But for those of you looking for the best FPS possible, go to adjust for best performance, press apply, then press OK, press OK, and we can then exit out of this tab. We can then apply a very quick bit of system System maintenance. For this, we need to navigate to the bottom left hand side, type in percentage, T E M P, and percentage once again, then press enter. This will then bring you into the Windows temporary folder, which is also the ultimate Windows dump, and Windows does not automatically clean this folder, meaning that depending on the age of a Windows install, this folder can sometimes be in excess of 80 plus gigabytes on your C drive being soaked up by temporary dump files. So, what we're simply going to go ahead and do is highlight all files and folders inside of here. You're more than likely going to have more than I do. Right click on them, then select delete. You'll be met with with this prompt, click do this for current items, then hit skip. And if you met with that prompt again, do the same thing. It's recommended to repeat that step around about once every month or so to stay on top of your system maintenance. This now leads us on to the last and final optimization with inside of this entire video and arguably one of the most important. Before applying this optimization, seeing we're going to be booting in the game after it, it's best to navigate to the bottom right hand side to your task icon tray and start closing out of all programs and game launchers in which you do not need running in the background whilst you're playing. This is a very good habit to get into for playing any game. For instance, I do not need Google Chrome running in the background whilst I'm playing. I also do not need Steam running in the background whilst I'm playing an Epic Games launcher game. And for me personally, I also like to close out of any antivirus in which I'm running on. That step is optional and you can do that at your own risk, but for the best performance possible, I find it helps me. We're then good to go ahead and apply this last and final optimization. For the last and final optimization with inside of this entire video, we're going to be going back inside of the FPS increase pack once more, going inside of the optimizations folder, and finally the ISLC, then recommended to drag this folder onto your desktop. Double click on the folder. With inside of you, you'll then meet with the intelligent standby list cleaner or ISLC. This is a very simple but effective two-in-one optimization program. The first part of the program simply frees up a excess pool of RAM in the background to ensure that you do not run out of memory and run into any stuttering issues. And the second part of the program comes in the form of the timer resolution application, which can drastically reduce input lag between your operating system, game application, and the hardware you have installed. Double click on the intelligent standby list cleaner. If the program doesn't automatically open up, navigate down to the task icon tray, find the green monitor and double click. Come down to the stop button. For the first box on the left hand side set this to 1024. For the second box this needs to be set to half of your total system memory. You can see this number found up here in the top. Your number is more than likely going to be different to mine but roughly half this top number. For me that's going to be 16,000. Then navigate over to the right hand side to wanted time resolution. Make sure that the enable custom time resolution option has been checked. Navigate over to the box with inside of it and set the value to 0 0.50. Then use the delete key to remove any other values. Go down to the ISLC polling rate drop down menu. Set this to 500 for good PCs and 1000 for slow PCs. But once you're done with inside of there, we can then go down to the bottom right hand side and click on start, and then click on purge standby list, minimize the program and leave that running in the background. I'm going to be giving you guys a very quick optimization for you guys running on the laptop. To do this, it's recommended to have a HDMI plugged into the laptop or whichever display out you have available in the laptop, have it plugged into an external monitor. Then what you'll simply do is follow the on-screen directions found here to disable the laptop screen. So the laptop screen is completely blacked out and the laptop is then completely displayed on a second monitor. You will find that you will be getting better FPS 
using this step on almost every single laptop out there. So now assuming that you've applied all of the optimizations with inside of this video, ISLC is booted up and you've closed out of all programs you no longer need using, the only thing left to do now is to boot into the game and enjoy the highly optimized Season 4 experience. And there you guys have it, that is the ultimate FPS increase guide for Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 4. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and have found some phenomenal games from doing so. And if you guys do enjoy my content, once again, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly of whenever a video goes live on my channel. Thank you very much for watching guys, I've been Panjano and I'll see you in the next one.